Hey guys, today is again live chat with my dance friend uh, Chris Diras from Cyprus. Yes, uh, we met at the online class um, with Buddha Stretch every week. That's how we met each other. And yeah, here she is. And today we will be just sharing dance experiences and some information about dance uh, with you guys. And also just telling our stories. And yeah, and we will see how is dance in Cyprus, right? Yeah, let us begin. One moment, guys. Invite. Send Okay. Waiting for Chris to to accept request. Hello. <laughs> I love your hair. <laughs> I, I I think I can hear you. I think can hear you. I think. Oh, there was something. Yes. Yeah, but still, not very well. Yeah. Don't hurry. Don't hurry. Take your time. <clears throat> yeah. Very low volume. Practically can't hear you. Yeah. Sorry, guys, let us fix it so everyone can hear us very well. And tune in if you have a time and stay with us for about 45 minutes to hour um, to cover some dance topics. And yeah, and actually, if you have questions, you can also ask questions and we can maybe just help you to figure some things out. Yeah, connection is not well. Can't hear you. No, no connection. Sorry, the speaker or something. Yeah, it's okay. We, we try one more time. So again, for those who have time now and we, we just want to tune in with us, uh, we will be discussing just dance industry, dance experiences and sharing some dance information with everyone and I will after the conversation I will save this video in my IGTV so you can always just go to it and uh, see it again or replay it and also uh, in a month I will be posting it in YouTube my YouTube channel which which is Tina Ko the same as a Instagram name and there you can always find it I have a folder which called uh, podcast and there you can see our podcast yeah hello hello i'm back can you hear me now yes, Is it better? yes can hear you yes. Now. yes so cool good. finally hey, my i'm tina <laughs> but i can't really see you now what? oh really yeah oh. <laughs> It's That's okay. Weird. Take your time. Take your time. We still have a few minutes. I don't know what to do to see you. I see black screen. Oh, really? You yeah. should just check up some those video things, like video sign maybe on your screen or something. Yeah, we still guys can give you like um, tech, technical things. <laughs> Lessons. <I can. laughs> can you okay. see me? No, I see black. I mean, I saw wow. you before when it, and then now I see black. Do you want to try one more time? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Just try, no worries, no worries. Okay, everyone left. Everyone the one away does with our technical problems. I understand you. <laughs> yeah, so just tune in and later just um, go to my YouTube and the video will be there forever so you can always check it up um our today's conversation and another thing is actually youtube i in my youtube i already started the 
kind of serious about like dance industry and just art and business like how dancers need to manage the finances uh, learn about financial part of the things business part of the things and be successful in both or apply that dance careers or dance goals with um with doing business or doing financial stuff in real world world yeah besides world of art yeah so please if you want just check it on youtube yeah so can you see me yeah i can see you now can you yeah, hear me you see oh, perfect finally. <laughs> does happen that happen you know that's okay no worries so yeah i'm i'm tina and you chris yes uh, what, what, what is your full name Chris. Uh, my actual name is christiana that's ah, okay. like my full name but for short is chris they call me chris didas because I used to be obsessed with Adidas and then it just stuck with me because I yeah. like the sound of it. So yeah, I'm not so obsessed anymore, but yeah, it, I like the name because it, it's been with me for a long time. So I kept it. That's cool. Yeah. My, my name is Valentina for one, but I don't use it because I live in China for a long time and it's too long okay. for them to pronounce. So long time ago, I changed it, just short it to Tina. And my last name is Kozo. So it became Ko. Just I shorted okay. it out too. Easy, easy. And then it became together. Yeah. And it became but kind of. Where are you from, really? I, uh, didn't, uh, I don't know where you're from. Uh, I am from Eastern Europe. And I live in China for like mostly now I live in China. But now I moved to America because. My husband's name is Chris. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he's American, so we married here and now we in America. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So where where in Europe are you from? Um I am Hungarian, but my town is in the Ukrainian border. But okay. I'm like Hungarian. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, nice to meet you officially. No. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> yeah, we met on the, to everyone who doesn't know, we met in an online class. And thank you so much for sharing your Instagram with me uh, during our session. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, I just saw your hair, first of all. <laughs> yeah, so I, I noticed your hair. <laughs> I love it. And that's it. You know, I just want to get to know more community and stay close to each other and share because I travel so much and I just love different international people, you know, and learn about different people's cultures and how they dance, how they think and all of that stuff. So yeah, very nice to meet you. <laughs> thank you and thank you for this. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For sure, for sure. Thank you for being here. Thank you for accepting. Yeah. Yes, I'm a bit shy on the camera, so <laughs> it was at first I was like, eh, I don't know. But yeah, cool. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> but you, you seem okay because everyone say, oh, I, I don't know, I never did it before. But then they're doing fine. So I mean, yeah, okay. when, you know, I'm in front of the people dancing and stuff or, you know, but talking is not really my, my thing. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I understand. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I just started it, this podcast like last year, last year <laughs> during the pandemic. And I was so like uncomfortable, but actually it was good uncomfortable. So I kind of like it. And it's I guess kind of cool. because it pushed you to, it pushed you to mm -hmm. learn something new or, you know, try something new. Yeah. And the idea was, it's just the same as you connect with the people. And I have so many, like I say, I say international people because my friends are around the world. So besides just typing them and Instagramming them or something, uh, I, I can just call them. And of mm -hmm. course we can talk, we talk private things too, but I can just call them and we can like talk about the same information. I would ask them like, how are you doing? How is dance now? What's up? in your place or thanks we, yeah. I, I decided to just talk it in public so people can learn too you know just for community like dancers supporting dancers mostly yeah mm -hmm. 
So yeah, tell us about yourself. Uh, try to start a podcast as well um, with my boyfriend, my partner, uh, because we do events and uh, we wanted to start something. We actually did one uh, live with Buddha Stretch on the on the channel of my event, but because my boyfriend is also the host he talks more and he was doing the talking so i was like in the corner just like yeah and just jumping in whenever there's something that i you know that i want to talk about but cool. yeah he's the talker i'm just like, <laughs> i'm just the ceo in the background <laughs> tell us more about what what kind of event guys you have or what, what was uh, that event yeah we throw uh hip hop festivals kind of thing which i mean mostly dance but we try to include <laughs> all uh elements of the culture we try to have some um uh performances or some um rap ciphers oh, wow. open, mic, open mics and some graffiti and wow. dj um we had a DJ competition one time, but you know, it's very small. The community here is very small. So okay. I'm trying to, you know, do things like this to build it up because yeah, the dance is more developed than the other um, elements, but still we're a very, very small island. So um, it's not so much going on. And since I moved here, because I used to live in New York for mm -hmm. like, okay almost nine years and um, got so much culture and oh. so much knowledge. So when I, I moved imagine. back here, I was like, okay, there is nothing happening. I have to start something. So I started with parties, just parties. And um, the first party was like some b-boys trying to battle. So it was fail. It wasn't a party at all, <laughs> but I slowly built it to a, I made it into a party, trying to. Do you have a name for party. it? Do you yeah, have it's like strawberry jam? It's in strawberry. Yeah. Okay, strawberry. strawberry. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So every one of you guys there, yeah, remember it. Let's check it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, later. Yeah, and do you do it in the clubs or what? Venue? So the parties are like in some um, bars. I try to keep it small because I want to avoid like big ciphers and okay. i wanted to be more of a party um but yeah so um the parties are in small little bars but the uh, events we did a few in like some bigger venues and then we do in an open amphi amphitheater in um, public public park okay so we did the last one we did was there and was supposed to happen again in 2020 but and buddha stretch was supposed to be here but obviously no. it was canceled and then we just got like an opportunity to do it this year but it's not gonna happen again so yeah you still not open guys you still not we're open, open. Right? we're open but now it's summer here like summer is very hot here and we okay. have a lot of things going on so now everything is open but they won't really allow us to do such a big event in an open place i mean they said we cannot have an approval like a written approval that it's okay to do it until like 10 days before the event so i oh. cannot risk that so gotcha. again it's a no-go and i'm very sad but you know i'm hoping for Soon. I'm I, I think we're, we're still uh, right now we're we're okay to do small parties i mean i'm starting to parties again slowly slowly but yeah for jams is very it's very difficult gotcha i understand yeah. is cyprus part of italy i'm sorry i just forgot already <laughs> uh, no we're a, a small right? island in the mediterranean it's uh close to greece so yeah. is we yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay 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 yeah. just you know europe uh, countries are mostly small i already because i don't live and don't travel there anymore so it's already start to mix in my head whereas i even was like watching yesterday where's denmark i already forgot you know like <laughs> yeah like, yeah well um, cyprus is like very small like it's a very small yeah, area yeah. where like uh 
1.2 million, I think now. So it's very small. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But it's very pretty. I remember before I would always want to go there <laughs> to yeah. like vacation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. So you, yeah. you, you lived in New York and mm -hmm. why, why you was there? Why you was there? Because it's, it's culture. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that like was mostly everything. the reason. That was mostly the reason. I mean, I always knew I wanted to go there and I tried to convince my parents and myself that I went there to study something just because I wanted to go, but I only wanted to do dance and culture. And the reason I picked New York, I mean, you can go and study in UK or somewhere closer, but I always knew I want to go to New York. So I kind of made my way there for school. And nice. then, you know, I, and I went to BDC so I can get my visa. Because at first I went to study uh, communication arts okay. in, a, in a college. But I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I wanted to find everything and dance-wise and, you know, culture-wise. So I ended up going to BDC so I can keep a visa. Um, Broadway Dance Center, you know, they don't really have a actual good dance program or whatever, but I could keep my visa and do do other things. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I did. And I stayed there for like more than a year so I can stay, you know, and do what I wanted to do. I was taking the classes there because I had to keep the visa and I was also going to a lot of other classes outside of there and mostly clubs because mm -hmm. that's where you learn the clubs they have like especially scene, new york yeah, yeah new okay. york clubs and the scene and everything so nice. yeah and that's where you learn more than you would in class basically oh yeah yeah, yeah but changing but for example what is your main style like of dance hip-hop yeah, we, we, yeah. we don't need to narrow it down, right? <laughs> we know that we do yeah. answers. I mean, it's mostly hip hop. I've, I've practiced a little bit of everything. And if I ever, I mean, if I had the patience back when, way back when, I would be a big girl, but I'm not gotcha. because I, yeah, I was never, but it's my all time favorite style. Wow. Yeah. You know, last week I had the interview with a B girl. From, I saw some, yeah. I saw a part, yeah. And she started at 37. And wow. yeah, it's been for her just like five years. And she loves it. And she do a lot of stuff with it. And uh, also with her, I, I met in one uh, battle scene, like in Cal back in California. And mm -hmm. uh, I met and I started talking to her because I saw her in Instagram. And I was like, oh my God, are you from this Melissa like from Instagram I saw you and why I, I was so inspired and attached to her because she's old older and I'm older and now when I go like for training and everything I have this dilemma because a lot of younger youngest coming on the scene mm -hmm. and I just feel like um, I don't have with whom to talk to or with whom to connect to and yeah. with whom to Mm, mm. you know like when you're talking and you give each other's advices or something you know you're pushing each other lifting each other up but i no one can lift me up because they're so young i have different experiences already and for me i it's, totally feel you you know i was there i was in that place they are now mm -hmm. but i'm just passed by it you know i'm not talking about dance level or something i'm just talking mental things like how we think how we see the things and i need to grow even further for myself but they are still you know we in different of course ways. yeah you know? and you can have this i mean you need to conversate with people that have been through yes. similar things or even different things just like yes already been through that stage where it's like okay where am i what am i doing yeah yes. this is amazing yeah. you yeah. know it's it's totally different when you're older and i've had this problem when i moved here because all the people that i knew that used to dance don't dance anymore, anymore. or whatever yes. they're not in this country anymore or you yes know. so uh, uh, the circle were... getting smaller right <laughs> everyone was a lot younger because i was also cut off a little bit from here because i was away for too long 
And when I moved back here, I, everyone that I met was a lot yeah. younger. So it took me a long time to adjust with this and still adjusting. And how do you yeah. deal with this, for example, for age dancers who already, because I, I transitioned already to choreographing and directing, but I still go take classes for my choreography, for my teaching skills, for, for myself. I want to be in trend. I want to be uh, in ahead of time. I don't want to be like, Oh, I was teaching this style like five years ago and I'm still teaching it. So I go to classes because I train and I will train all the time and I will dance oh, but just like, but I will dance just for myself mostly, not because I need to go and book a job or something like that. But anyways, when you go to train and you meet them and when you go and to the battles even too, <laughs> right? It's so many young people and yeah. how you find that circle? for example? Mm, I mean, I've been through stages where I was super depressed about this situation. Too, it was oh my God. <laughs> very depressing for me. Um, even like hang out, like you want to hang out with other dancers and to, you know, because you share the same passion. And there was nobody that I could hang out right? with. That was the like, same or train with and you know closer to my age you know very difficult it was like the most difficult thing i have to go i had to go through a while here. but now it's better right but now i mean there are still no dancers my age obviously but um i feel better with some of the younger people a lot better and i mean not everybody but there's specific people that i train with that are so much younger than me but I still learn from them and they learn from me. And I have a balance now because of skating. Because yes, we will get to it. <laughs> yes, because when I started skating, I met some amazing people that are a lot closer to my age. Oh, wow. I mean, we are all beginners. So we kind of, you know, I had friends to hang out with that we still have a cool um, thing to do together and we have something in common. So that helped me a lot with like coping with the not having dance friends yeah. my age. Yeah. Gotcha. So, mm -hmm. so what about skating? Like do you just, um, so to everyone who doesn't know and you just add Chris, um, uh, Chris Didas and check her out. And so she does skating. Like roller skating. Roller skating. Sorry, I'm yeah. not an expert on those. So don't mind. No, it's okay. I'm not an expert either. <laughs> yeah. And so, oh, by the way, I have a friend in Thailand. He do that. And okay. Do you dance and skate, or do you separate it? Because mm, I, I dance and everything. I mean, you can do you can do many things with that. Okay. But I dance because I'm a dancer, and I mean, when I started doing it. I, you know, for fun, I started doing it. I also really needed a hobby because I haven't had a hobby in a long time, okay. like since I was a teenager. So, and dance is my life. So it's not a hobby, you know? And um, when I started it for fun, um, I also started because I, I like to dance on it, on the skates. You gotcha. know, I've ne I had never done it before. I was inspired by like, an old friend that is doing it in Spain. And then um, she was about, about to teach classes in Cyprus, but I was not here. I was actually in New York at the time, visiting in 2019 summer. Okay. So a lot of people started the classes and I was watching it and I was like, oh my God, I want to do that too. Uh, and I'm very jealous. So when I came back, I ordered the skates because you couldn't find them anywhere. And I just started, like, I mean, by myself, mostly in the dance studio because I was scared to stay wow. outside because okay. I've never done it before. So I was scared to Four. hurt myself. And yeah. then also I, I dance is my life. So if I don't have my legs or my arms, I couldn't do anything. So I mostly did it in the studio because I had four walls to, to grab on. And I even started dancing dance steps on the skates before I even learn how to roll, because it's different when you're outside. You have to learn how to stop. You have to, you know, so you don't yeah. die. But um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I, I was doing it in the studio with my four walls. 
and then finally went outside in the real world and realized okay you have to actually learn how to do it now <laughs> because it's dangerous but yeah. yeah so you can do a lot of different things mm. i just really like dancing on the um, on the yeah stage. but this yeah. is more of a hobby that's just you like it yeah you it's fun. my hobby yeah mm -hmm. okay. it's my hobby i'm still a beginner i just it was just a really big confidence boost for everything for me besides the fact that i met these cool people it's also how fast i progressed because progress makes makes you you know it gives you a lot of confidence and because with dance i've been dancing for so long i can't really see my progress so much but with skating i saw the progress like really fast Oof. so it gave me like a lot of boost even for with my dance you know gotcha. so yeah so how, and how it helped you, know, you exactly with dance then how it did help you exactly with dance dance moves i think it was mostly confidence mostly okay. that part not so really helped me with my skills or anything mostly gotcha. confidence i think yeah okay and tell us them more just just because for me even us and me uh like um i never been to cyrus uh, cyprus yes yeah, cyprus uh mm -hmm. and um so how it is dancing like we understand this is a small place is an island and it's like tourist spots in europe and mm -hmm. uh, we can understand something about those kind of things but what is like more about dance like what styles people usually dance there how people train there do you have dance studios or more clubs uh, do you have a job dance jobs and if it's jobs what kind of jobs or something like that it will be very interesting for us to open this okay. kind of thing so there are a bit too many dance schools <laughs> like for the <laughs> island like the island is very small but we have too many dance schools okay so um people are a bit like separated like in schools and uh it's mostly um there's ballet commercial contemporary like in every place and there is everywhere the the label hip hop in every school hip hop okay. and breaking in every school but of course it's not hip hop and breaking is whatever that person is making up on the spot and calling it that um mini we choreography have class is like uh, yeah basically choreography yeah. but like whatever they make up there and they call it hip hop with whatever music they decide to do it is like exactly. choreography class but they just call hip hop to get people and we have very few people in the whole of cyprus that actually teach hip hop um we don't have we have one popping instructor um well two but one is not really teaching anymore so and there's like no poppers there's just these two people um we have no house there is Aww. a few people there is a few people who teach house like there's one guy that was with me in new york and he just moved back as well but he's in a different city and he's teaching house now um another girl but now she's in paris so she teaches whenever she comes but there's no active like there's no active. house dancing active mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. uh, yeah so it's very limited we have a lot of b boys what about um, popping and locking locking is a very it's an anomaly here we have more lockers in cyprus like compared the ratio of how small we are we have too many lockers compared to the other styles okay. because of you know we have a gemini's here do you know gemini from paris from no. france mm -mm. he well he's here and he he came many years ago and we just the owner of my school like the guy who um started street styles in cyprus he brought him here a lot and he start he start he got into locking and he's a really big influence he has a lot of students 
So locking is a lot. Like we have a lot of lockers in Cyprus, but two poppers and many lockers. Wow. That's many so locking good. kids, but yeah. And for the hip hop, as I said, there's very few actual hip hop teachers here. What about cramp? Cramping? Mm. Um, I think that. there's some, some, somewhere there's a class, but I don't know if it's actually cramping. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. And so, and you mainly do you teach inside? I teach, yeah. I uh, teach, yeah. What, what kind? I mean, there's no oh, stretches here. Yeah. This is too popular. Oh my god, well, stretch, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi stretch. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I do teach. Um I do teach. Yeah, that's what yes. your next you had another question about um if there's jobs. Well oh, yeah. as a dancer, uh you can't really make money from just dancing. I mean there are some commercial jobs, but you i mean you mostly teach mm -hmm. yeah and everyone is teaching everyone but i see that everywhere everyone is like when i started teaching i was so like i was keeping so low for like a couple of years until i learned the amount until i learned how to teach and all the stuff i still been challenged by like huge places they asked me to teach and I was challenged that time, but still I was getting, I was trying to stay low until I feel like I can, you know, but now like, even like my teammates, they teach like my, my like, I mean, like I, um, this is my team and I teach them, but you know, they, I still feel like they're so in, inexperienced and even their dance skills are so inexperienced just in view of a knowledge or understanding or even cultural that understanding and knowledge things and they still teach and for me it's like okay that's cool because you can make money and make a living and still they teach basic classes very basic classes but still um you know yeah. technique is technique basics I mean, is basics there there's for me there's a huge responsibility in teaching. Like, I mean, huge, right? you don't have to be amazing dancer, but there's many things. There's, first of all, what you teach, if you understand what you teach, and you're passing that knowledge on. So it's okay for someone to just be doing it for their thing and just dancing because they love it. It's for everybody. Do it. If you don't want to learn, where it came from and what happened and how and who and what, it's okay for you if you don't want to. But if yeah. you're teaching, okay. I, don't, no, <laughs> don't teach. Like, or, you know, give respect to where it came from, how it came about and who. And, you know, you can't just teach random movement that came through your head and call it something. Like, you have to actually know what you're doing. It's a huge responsibility, and so many kids are just learning nothing, you know? Learning nothing. I, I agree. They're just like, oh, this teacher is cool. And I'm like, why is cool? You know, when you go to try this teacher's class, it's just a choreo, and the teacher really feels hers, hers or his body. Um, it, he, he or she has a style, like they feel good in it, or they developed it, like personalized style feel or whatever and they just made that choreo and they just made up moves steps put it into the music made a choreo and just sharing with everyone but i go to take this class for me for me is like so <laughs> you know so what okay i learned your piece i understand how you think and how you move that's it but what is there for me you know or something and as i i i started noticing when you get more and more like serious about everything and you really really want to know the things before you say even to someone this or advise someone on something um i just feel like so much pressure on me as a teacher you know like i would mm -hmm. now i'm thinking like 100 times and researching so much before i even um, say something to someone like to youngest mm -hmm. especially you know because it feels so important to like pass the correct information and everything and and the most important for me is pass like 
information for five, ten years ahead, not only about this choreo or this step, you know. And as mostly, it's not only about dance. It's about how you approach things and exactly. personalizing things and everything. So, mm -hmm. you know. So it's a huge I, responsibility. And I, I don't understand, like in China, actually, we see the video and we see kind of those teachers and we understand this. This is, this is person not experienced enough. This is person is experienced. Oh, I need to take this class. You know, we watch mm -hmm. the video or we just hear someone took the class, try it out, for example. And they say, no, this is a good teacher. We directly will say, this is the teacher. This is cool choreo. That's it. We know the difference. We directly, I mean, we know the difference who is in teaching circle already. Like, and we try to spread it between the students, but still so many youngies, even in university, in dance university in Beijing, they just want a choreo. Give me choreo moves. I want to dance like this uh, millennium video in YouTube. You know, that's it. And right that's now they, they just want to be famous as well. You know? With Instagram and all these things, yeah. they and TikTok, everything viral. Now they just, especially I guess in China when there's uh, like so many kids, I guess that dance. I mean, there's like such a big population. I guess they just want to be famous. Some of them, not in China especially, but in general, like kids want to. Like now is a thing. They want to be famous. But for example, the most if you own the goal. Studio, but if you own the studio. For example, and you have a classes, and what are you gonna do? Like, if you're, you know, here's so many youngies and everything. What are you gonna do? You, you just gonna ask someone to teach who has following, or whom people like, because yeah, they yeah. Their, you know what I mean. So, need to, right. people, because the market. People started you know? doing TikTok classes. People teach TikTok classes, <laughs> like not in Cyprus. I, I don't think, but like I see that <laughs> online. I'm like, why? No, no, no. There's Why? people who can dance. I, I feel about TikTok. I really don't care too much about TikTok because it's different culture. It's different thing. It's different vibe. It's different yes, but why? I, I understand and I agree with you. But at the same time, why would you go and give somebody money to teach you something that you can just learn on your... Like it's... Okay, I mean, yeah, I don't know, I maybe I'm not getting. I understand you, but you just uh, you just say it as a pro professional dancer, you know, and there's just people who don't know dance, and they don't mm -hmm. want to be dancers. They just want to know some moves. Maybe they will just show it to the friends, or they will just feel good about it, like hobby. For someone, it's hobby. Yeah, and, I mean, of course, not everybody um, who's coming to learn from me yeah. is going to become a dancer. I mean you know it's yeah to have fun for example but like still. i don't teach open classes because i use i i choose my niche i teach like dancers who want to be professional dancers or artists who sing okay. you know i know my niche because that's how i teach classes i'm very strict and whatever and um, some people are more can uh, bring like joy to people or just have fun you know so they teach more open classes they fit more for open classes and someone i it's just i think in the future there will be more keep up classes more tiktok classes and more all of that because it's just different goals because dance is so big you know and it can be for someone it's just hobby for yeah someone, TikTok work. classes are real tiktok classes exist yeah, i've yeah, seen yeah. that <laughs> Steezy has yeah. it too. Steezy.com, right? That like. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's like sponsored ads that keep yeah. coming up. Like, and I, yeah. It's huge. It's new, new wave. That's it. It's huge mm -hmm. market. So yeah. Cool. And so, as I understand, so then, as I understand, you guys just have mostly dance studios teaching. So meaning teaching jobs, and sometimes some okay. commercials, and that's it. Do you yeah. have artists like who sing and they need dancers? There are some artists, but not so many that do like this kind of things with dancing and stuff. Okay, there are a few, but it's like Greek music. Uh huh. Okay. So I mean, in Greece, they have a lot of artists and they have more jobs. It's a bigger country as well, so they have more of that and more TV shows and. Um, lot of commercial dancing there 
Like, are you not connecting with them? Like, I mean, Cyprus is not, not connecting to Greece, no? About that. Uh, it is connected. It is connected. We're a different country, but we are connected. connected. Yeah. And a lot of um, people from Syria live there or the opposite, like, for work. Gotcha. So, it exists, you know, I just, I'm a bit away from that, um, that culture. Mm -hmm. What do you think about social media and dance in general and in Cyprus? How it changed everything or what is your thoughts anyways? I mean, it's weird for me to talk about this. There's like a lot of, there's ways to do things. And I think social media is amazing if you use it right. Um, but of course, there's a lot of things that change with it you know a lot of things it brings that are not so good um and with tiktok as well like people think they can learn just or they're dancers just because they're doing this thing um but you know there's uh, there's buddha stretch is teaching online and you can get classes from him but oh. you are learning you know and Again, social media helps with that too. The fact that people from all over the world are on there and you can find access to everything. And yeah. this is one of the things that also takes me to another conversation that you have no excuse to not know who yeah. is this person and who is this person and yeah. why, because they're online. Yeah. Yeah, so it helps. It helps with a lot of things. Of course, we get addicted and people use it the wrong way or to attack other people or, you know. Mm -hmm. I try to be here, but not be here at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, me too. I agree. I agree. I just do my thing, share my stuff, uh, try to do something good for people, always share information, my knowledge, experience, and I, I just hope that it can help someone some way somehow um, exactly. and that's it and i'm off doing my stuff and nothing more than that you know and sometimes when i see a lot of videos i can feel that i'm becoming overwhelmed so i'm just like stopping watching it and sometimes i need to search for like maybe some inspiration or just like oh let me see what's up or this is nice flow or whatever just like uh, some people keep me, how to say, creative. Like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you can combine and everything. Yeah, think bigger, Tina, you know, or something, you know. Like, try to maybe mix something, figure these things out. That's it. Just trying to, to be good with it, you know. For sure, don't, yeah. don't say anything. Uh, I would all, actually, I would write on, on in the comments on some videos for hip hop steps. Um, uh, for example, some hip hop steps people misunderstood or place them differently or put them together mm -hmm. and say it's the same. And I would mm -hmm. just write, yo, um, this is not the same. You can ask Buddha Stretch. People who created it are still alive, still here. You can just hit them up on Instagram and just make sure about it. But other ways, it's a great job. Thanks for sharing because you're at least trying something and bringing like things to, to people. But that step is wrong that's it and peace and love no, nothing like oh you might you know and and you say like love dance love no offense you know and whatever mm -hmm. but, but i just feel like that's a little you know what i mean like it's kind yeah. of just don't say anything but i feel no i need to say because i i'm part of it and i want to if uh, the person can really correct it or reupload it or whatever or make changes and people can learn it like right way and i know that's the right way that would be nice. But if he just ignores or she ignores or something, it's their choice, you know. But I just said, like, I don't yeah. know. So I have this thing I mean, about myself. An That's it. <laughs> Another thing for me is also, you know, knowing if the, what you're seeing is actually what they're showing, you know, because with Instagram and all the social media, you don't know what you get, you know. Mm -hmm. I I mean, I know very few people stay real and try to keep it real. And a lot of people just give you something that's not there. 
And True. that's, I mean, especially if they go viral and then you see a whole different, you know, are they trying to go viral? So they pretend they're somebody that they're not. Yes. And, you know, I want to be here to, like you said, you get inspiration, you see this, you see that. But I also don't want to see something that's just somebody pretending to be somebody. Oh, yeah. You know? That's very, that, yeah. that hurts, like, you know? Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah, I for try sure. to just... Yeah, that's, you said that right. I didn't know how to say it. You say it right, like just being true. Someone is truthful, someone is just like playing it, faking it for whatever other reason. But yeah, like finding those like true people and maybe sharing with them, uh, getting back because, like, together. It's easy, to, it's easy to get um, off track and, and get sucked in to this, to try to be something you're not. So people like you and you get more likes and more oh yeah and you do more for that or to get to become viral or this and that and the other and people change from this and mm -hmm. i've seen that happen and it's not cool Oof. i mean I, i guess it's not easy to not get sucked in it's not easy for everybody yeah, yeah. okay you know so trying to protect your energy <laughs> <laughs> definitely right definitely yeah. Like mm -hmm. knowing your values and sticking to it and exactly. using these other things just like tools to help you to do your thing. That's it. No, nothing more. Don't don't change for it or something, right? Mm -hmm. like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You see, like, um, we, we're using the right words. Sometimes uh, not finding the right words makes us confused too, you know, but yeah. Mm -hmm. That what you say, it's totally 100% true yeah yeah so and I, I just think like these people or youngest and everything you give them time and eventually they will understand these things uh, people have their own journeys and sometimes they get confused but eventually you know everything will be on the place anyways and yes so, of course yeah. okay how you see dance in the future in 10 years How you see dance uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if we will actually be out dancing or just be in the house and just who knows I don't know it's scary to think about Is you that, tell me how do you see dance in the future <laughs> I, I just want to take care of my body so when I'm 40 I can still dance mm, I think that Uh, that would be less decay, change dance so much. I'm talking about like stage performance, dance, choreography and everything. So many new vibes, so many new flavors, so many. I, I don't want to call them styles, it's just flavors to me. It just moves based on mm -hmm. pop culture and some dance and it's just expressed in so different, many different ways that I'm excited to see new styles, like new ways of expressing things oh. we already have, you know. I'm so yeah. excited because I know that this like media and this like world changing into like everyone is so connected. Doesn't matter where we from, right? I, I I know you already, right? We even did a met live or something, but I already know you. Maybe we're not like close friends, but yeah, someone will tell me something. I will say, oh, I think you can ask Chris, and she will tell you or whatever, you know, because. We have this. You catch, to you catch vibes, in, especially in Buddhist class. I mean, I'm, I never <laughs> right. thought that I would be in an online class and vibe so much with people. Like, right? Yeah. I, and, and we were helping so much. When it started. Mm -hmm. I, w I remember first class, I was so uncomfortable. I was like, oh, I don't know. And then third, third class, uh, yeah. second, third, and I get used to it. And I vibe mm -hmm. now, too. I started doing this when it was the first, our first lockdown here and it helped me so much because I couldn't dance with other people and I never thought I would vibe so much with others right? through Zoom. Perfect. Yeah, so I mean, I catch vibes through there. It's crazy. Like I, I, I only met you a few times there and you know, I, right? can, I feel the same, like you said. Yeah, but I felt connected. That's why I asked you, like Chris, mm -hmm. like you know, like Instagram. Maybe we can connect or whatever. I just wanted to see what you do, you know, because I just felt like, oh, she's moving cool, you know. And I felt you connected to Buddha, so that's why now I know that you was in New York, mm -hmm. and I probably mm -hmm. trained with him long time, so he knows you. And I just felt like he knows how you move, meaning that 
you know it's yeah hard. yeah because i also was a regular in the online class so he yeah he was he usually puts more the people he knows on the spot first and he doesn't oh, want to make okay. you feel uncomfortable too much when you're new and then then he'll make you feel uncomfortable for sure but yeah, yeah you can tell that when someone knows yeah you're right yeah, it feels connection mm-hmm. right like that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of certain way. yeah that's it and here we are i just think changes is good i'm no more gonna sit and complain because something is changing i'm just gonna grab it learn it rip it apart and move on and enjoy life because if i'll be sitting and just like fighting this is not good then i i cannot accept changes within dance or whatever what i will do as a teacher in my power or like just sharing person in my power take as much classes from people like buddha and other originators like mr regals and everyone to just Mm -hmm. as much as learn in my lifetime the knowledge so i can pass true knowledge and stay authentic to art i've chose and just adapt to any changes like i'm now in instagram too and i do some reels videos some tiktok videos but i'm trying i'm still trying to figure out how to make it like tiktok tiktok version but still keep myself there you know like still yeah liking use it, use it your way yeah use it your way so people can see yeah. something i mean i tried using tiktok Me too. but i but i wasn't making tiktok videos i was just posting really? what i would post on instagram but nobody wants to see that like they just it's skip different. it it's different so yeah it's different and i mean i didn't have the to be honest i didn't have the patience to to do it but yeah i'm not using not it now everybody. because i i don't i don't have i didn't figure out what is the best for me so now i'm just focusing on instagram because i have followers there and i still can grow my community there and i use youtube like i'm back to like roots i use youtube i'm i'm making a lot of mentorship things there already and everything i just wow. i just feel i want to give more to the people and i just feel that youtube is like so connect i'm so connected to it it's just for me whatever i think i can express that while tiktok is i still cannot figure out how i can express are you doing vlogs and things like this or are you you doing just you started putting... just started oh you just started okay um, yeah because i um uh, uh like my team is in china my company is in china and everything now i'm a little bit disconnected from it i still mm-hmm. hold the things but now i have people who do it for me because i'm physically not there until i go back i just Are you going back? Are you going to live in China again? Um, I I always will be connected to it and everything because it's kind of like my home and my mm. place where I truly like became very serious, focused person and adult. Like okay. that was between my 20 to 30 years old, so that was, mm-hmm. that was China period of time. So for me, everything I know now, even the styles or whatever, it's from China. is all the people who was coming even buddha was coming to teach in china i would go take class workshops every workshop everything what i was happening i was trying to be there and plus i was working building my career my contacts and just working to pay everything my bills yeah and it's just i learned everything who i am now here because um when i was growing up in europe in small town I pretty much didn't go anywhere just small town and it's a bubble you know so and yeah. I was just locked in the bubble I knew it I knew it because for everyone I was just like weird but for myself I wasn't understood that's it mm-hmm. and when I get yeah. out from there that's when I felt like okay now I can not I'm no wrong actually it's it's me and who I am and I just start to pursue it and people around me came more open minded and they say okay do it instead of saying what what are you talking about <laughs> or something things mm-hmm. so i just consider china is very close to my heart and wow. we moved here for like family future family but i i guess we will be living here and there between two countries so you Most met first. your husband in china what's up oh no you met no, no no we're here but we met in china yeah he lived you in met china. In- yeah he lived in beijing in I traveled but he usually lived just in Beijing for 12 years. I'm like less than 10. I think I'm 9 years. Okay. So, yeah, we met there and we long time four years was that together and then we 
they just wanted to like build the family because you know china is still for chinese people more we're just like a foreigner i don't mm-hmm. want to call it like racist thing but it's kind of differentiality between china and foreigners doesn't matter how you look so it's fa- it felt like that you know so i just was like no i don't, i'm so tired of it you know so we're trying here now Mm-hmm. In future, two countries. Well, uh, where we will we will let you know. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> okay. Too, you know? Well, maybe we we'll meet somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I lived in New York, by the way, in 2010 for a little bit of time, like six oh. months. Wow. Okay. Maybe I saw you. Did you go out? <laughs> Did you go to clubs? <laughs> nah. No. No. Um, I was a student, exchange student, and I was busy working and doing stuff. No, not really. I gave up dancing that time actually. So, oh wow. Yeah. Okay. And then I didn't have any dance experience from New York. Yeah. But in the future so I want to go visit. to New York. <laughs> yeah, you have to go. You have to go to 36 Chambers. What what is that? Uh it's the event that Buddha Stretch and uh, some oh. other OGs are doing together. It's like a uh it's like a camp like okay. a whole week of classes okay. and they're doing combination classes so it would be like three teachers together um and like one day's floor work one day's uh couple partner work and i mean it's 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 amazing because it's wow. all the amazing people together wow. and um yeah it's amazing they're doing a small version this year but i can't go obviously Next, so, yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. So yes. we'll be traveling. I was there. I went to 2019 for mm-hmm. for that. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, should... And what about the studio up top? Does they close it or studio? They don't have a studio. They didn't up top, up top. No, they don't have a studio. Oh, really? Mop. I thought they mm-hmm. have like Brian and him, no? Brian? Brian Link and Link? No, yeah. they don't have a studio. They just, I mean, most of the year they travel anyway. So, I mean, they don't have their own studio. They just teach when they're back. They were teaching either BDC or special classes, yeah, exactly. but they don't have regular classes in New York because they travel most of the year. They used to travel most of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. They, te- they taught at EXPG and yeah. Gotcha. but they don't have a studio just mm-hmm. one 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 last question I ask you because it's about the time um for example yeah. uh, i met like a uh, dancer from new york and um they moved to la but they're more like commercial style dancers mm-hmm. and they all say like new york is not too challenging for them that they moved to la because the speed and amount of classes and the and everything is so much more intense that they feel they can grow so much faster than in New York. But I'm, I know for sure they're commercial. And I, I figured it out, I didn't know, that commercial and street is separated, which is very sad for me, because actually I am from stage performance all my life, and I love mm-hmm. street styles. And I'm like training in this, and also in this. I work in this, but have fun in this. And yeah there yeah. is there is a separation okay. i mean there's a lot of people especially in the us there's a lot of people who do both like you okay. there is a lot of people who are b boys or b girls but they dance for commercial companies okay. they do shows they do you know stage performances um there's a lot of people like you but there is a huge amount of people more than people like you who do only commercial and have no idea what it yeah, is exactly. in the other world. Mm-hmm. And I mean, especially in New York, there are so many amazing dancers that you will never see because they will just go to the club or just train in the session and they they don't go um out of that bubble. Mm-hmm. So they could be like, I mean, I know so many people that are so good. They're not even on Instagram. Um, that kind of thing. So yeah, in New York, there's a lot of these people. I don't know about LA so much, but I know that wow. in Cali, there's so many more. Um, it's so much better for commercial dancers. Mm-hmm. I know they get 
for work or i mean it's also so much more competitive i guess for yeah. to get the job and stuff but yeah okay. i don't have too much experience with that but i know i know a lot of people that are in either ways um and yeah. street dancers so they try street dancers then what they they do battles or they just suffer do their battle maybe sometime and then just go back to like regular job or something yeah maybe they have a regular job maybe they just have a um a few classes maybe okay. they don't teach at all <laughs> i mean um yeah and I i've learned a lot from people like that a lot <laughs> i mean they don't i mean i know people that i'm very close to that don't have instagram and or i don't really communicate with them unless I go back to New York and I go find them wow. in the cave. Okay. Yeah, there are so many people like that. And yeah. Gotcha. I understand. Very, very interesting for me to hear that. Amazing people, amazing dancers that you will learn so much from just by talking to them. Uh -huh. <laughs> It's yeah. for me, we're moving to LA and I just feel that so much juice there about like work, work, work. And I understand that. I understand that, but also I'm dancing not because of work. <laughs> That's my main thing, you know. If there's yeah. no pleasant jobs for me, then I will do something else. Period. Mm -hmm. I, I dance to grow even when I do a job or something. Of course, there will be sometimes jobs you just do, you know, maybe for contact or something, but it's just sometimes. It's not like yeah. more than for joy, you know, and... It's just, you know, inside with me, I, I have a little bit of like a little battle. So mm. I'm scared a little bit that I don't want to be like treated like, oh, I'm just like commercial or something. No, I'm, I'm dance culture and I'm true dancer first. I love it. When I dance, my heart is like open, you know, and then I go to, the, to do the work. I do work stuff, but my heart is still should be open, not just I would yeah. want to do it just for work thinking about work you know also at the end of the day if you don't even enjoy yourself when you dance outside of you know if you can't dance outside of work then it's like no better than having an office job like why you know it's sad that you cannot enjoy dancing mm -hmm. no it's not you i mean others yeah 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 I, I just try to implement it into directing and everything because I also like to make videos and music, you know, and all that stuff, you know. I, I, love, I, I love stage too, you know. Stage is like my baby, you know. Yeah. When production comes together, you know, and everyone is moving on the stage and this lighting and these costumes and this hair, it's all thought through, you know, and it's so mm -hmm. much bigger too, you know, that it's like kind of culture too, you know. And of course. And it's such a, like, I don't know, I would not change it for, for anything, you know. It's just, it's just, you know, when I was a kid, I was doing it. And it was just after school. And now when you're like, my God, I'm making money out of it, you know. Like, it's like, mm -hmm. what the heck is, like, happiness, you know. <laughs> wow. I'm very happy to see people like you, like, actually really happy oh. with what they do. Oh, my God. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what, like, when I got my injury, I was like, okay, so now if I can move, what I'm going to do, you know? <laughs> well, I don't know to do anything else. <laughs> you have an injury? Yeah, since last year. Muscles and, and everything, you know. Oh, oh, so okay. We get through it, you know. Get through it. Yeah, it's normal because we overwork our bodies. So, I mean, they're bound to. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's wrap it up. That was such a nice conversation time. Together. Yes, thank you so much again for inviting me. For sure. Um, for sure. Time. We can do it again later if we will have some new topics or something happening. Or even for your event, like you, you have your event and you want to talk about this more. I'm sure that everyone would love to hear Sure. It. Well, it will not happen anytime soon, but thank <laughs> you. <anyways. laughs> yes. yes. Thank you so much. And yeah. Deep Prank, the, he keeps yeah. commenting. That's my it's partner. So I had to shout, shout him out. Thank he helps you. me with my events. We work together. 
<laughs> yeah, dance lab, dance lab for sure. Dance support and let's stick together as a community, huge community. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank Peter. you so Very much nice. for the talk. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to know nice you. To meet you as well. And I will see you soon, maybe in Buddha class oh. or maybe. Of course. And if I'm maybe in Europe, in somewhere close. Maybe I can sneak somewhere there. Of course. Welcome to Cyprus as well. <laughs> Swim to the <laughs> island. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank okay. you. See you around. Take care. Okay. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.